forgotten about cars. Can't talk new cars. <laughs> There globally, are no new cars. Globally. Although every now and then I see one and it's like, well, where'd that come from? Or, you know, who, mm. who's selling those things? So, but it's, it's, it's crazy. In fact, we're going to kick off with that in our, right at the very start here, because you, you, you had an opportunity to talk with some folks over at a, a couple of showrooms anecdotally a lot of anecdotal stuff so we're not going to put any names to oh, any yeah. of this but this is a global phenomenon and so first of all we've got a problem that we've been talking about forever with chips and you know like everything our cars are run by computers now so we've got a chip shortage which is leading to control units not being able to be populated with the necessary microprocessors yep. we've got a delivery shortage of vehicles, so we've got things that are just caught up and they can't get delivered. Because we've got the chip shortage, because we've got delivery shortage, we've got now parts and other things that haven't been able to get delivered to be put onto vehicles. And that means we've had many production lines, and we, we heard about these a while back, that got closed down, that we don't know if they're back on or not. We've, we've had the tsunami of the perfect storm for the automobile industry, where all of a sudden... There's not a lot of new cars out there. No, it's not good. And boats catching fire. Oh yeah, there was that. There something. Was, there'll be something. You know, be, it'll be something that'll be looked after here. But from what I see at the minute, you know, that wouldn't be something I'd be re- willing to take the gamble on. And so, they're, they're not sold here. I imagine for two reasons: the training isn't to that level yet, and they aren't proven in this climate yet. Well, that's the big one. And any, and I, I had a couple of people email me over last week and saying, hey, I've got an opportunity to buy this vehicle. It's coming from this one vehicle is from the U.S. And, and I, you know, they say, oh, it should be okay, right? And I wrote back and I said, is it GCC spec? Because if it is not, run away. Yeah. Because all of those vehicles, if Ford brings in a vehicle, if GM brings in a vehicle, anyone brings in a vehicle from the U.S., that means it is made for North American specifications. They've got, you know, they don't have necessarily enough cooling, uh, you know, enough cooling capacity for the oil, for the transmission, the air conditioning units. There, I, mean, I remember once years ago we had a gentleman come in who is the engineer in the UAE who works on the specking of vehicles for Ford, and he had a list of different things that that he would change, even down to the glass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, which is the whole reason why I, I, you know, I could buy a Wrangler here. Can't take it back to Canada, and they're the same reason because they're going. Well, it's got the wrong glass, it's got the wrong fenders, it's got the wrong signal lights, it's yeah, wrong emissions regulations. Yeah, wrong. It's, it doesn't have any of the stuff you need, and it, 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 that vehicle's made in Canada. No, sorry, doesn't work. So th- this is a big problem. Going right back to the electric vehicles that Volkswagen's got, and someone's bringing in. Who knows? if they've been specced for this environment and B, who's going to fix it. So on one breath, I'm going power works guys got to get up to snuff on work, fixing these things because yeah. there's a, there's a, a hole in the market. Me and DJ are, are, are in the process of the certification for electric vehicles. And obviously we can't be brand specific now. Right. But the, the fact is that, you know, as a manufacturer, it would be easy for VW to say, you know what, we've got a couple hundred of these lying around, let's send them over to Al Nabuda or Ali and Sons because they're not selling any cars because they haven't got any to sell. Um, But they're not, that. that's such a minuscule amount of money for them. Yeah, yeah. The, the VW are going to make a very, very small drop in the ocean in terms of their annual profits by doing that. And they're actually probably going to cause themselves trouble because the technicians aren't trained, the right. service advisors aren't trained, the managers and the sales executives are not trained. How and how then can you risk doing that? Yeah. Those, those cars need testing in this region for a long, long time. Yeah. For a long time. They need heat testing. They need to be here in the summer. They need to be here in you, the winter. You, you drive you, them up on the mountains. You take an example of the XL1. The VW XL1 that that would do was it something like 300 kilometers on one liter of fuel? They could have made that a three four million dirham vehicle, and they would have sold a hundred of them here. They didn't, and the reason that they didn't is because it doesn't work in this climate. Yeah, it does not work in this climate. You cannot 
you cannot do. I think the the piece in the, it was in the newspaper or it was in one of the motoring magazines. They did the seven Emirates on a liter of fuel, which is by no stretch any. You know that that is an amazing feat, but you they had to bring their own diesel in for it. Yeah, and they didn't do it in August <laughs> or July. Yeah, you know they did it when the when the climate was fair. So it's not worth that risk. You you cannot risk your reputation of your brand by putting out a subpar product now when you go back to something we talked about before with ford ford was selling some of their vehicles and incomplete giving people two thousand dollars or so back wasn't it and then offering them a free retrofit when the parts become available yeah that's a little bit different we're we're talking about more utilitarian vehicles you can't go and do that with a with a a a very high-end electric vehicle from somebody like vw who's it's not being sold as a utilitarian car. It's being sold as a luxury family vehicle. I, I saw one the other day. It was at night. And I went, oh, man, I would own one of these in a heartbeat. <laughs> and and it, the lighting is what sold it on me. So the VW badge, front and back, are lit up. And the lines go through the lights. Yeah. So it's just, I always went, wow, this it, it looks nice. It legitimately looks really nice and they've just played with some elements I, you know and i thought wow yeah yeah i mean look the 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 anecdotal um stories we mentioned at the top of this was that i was in the showroom and i was actually looking over a car for a, for a friend of mine now i was looking over a car from the showroom because the showroom were unable to certify it the reason they were selling it out of the showroom was because they had space and they needed to fill uh-huh. it so they're um, just putting cars in there. So the so people they, drive by, look in the window. Lots of cars in there. Taking it in as a trade-in. It was relatively clean. It was a very good-looking car. Um, but it was too old and gone too far for them to be able to sell it as a used car. There was not enough money in it for them. Mm. It, it, it would have cost them five to 10,000 dirhams okay. internally to put it up to standard to then sell it with a warranty. And then a lot of money. They're, they're not going to be able to then sell the car. But they're able to sell it and make a few thousand dirhams and keep the the sales executives paid so that's great but they've got no cars there's nothing the the, the showroom had like 10 GTIs in it (laughs) and and now so how do you you keep a business I mean you obviously talk to the sales guys how do they keep a business functioning if you've got no new product like we should be selling the 2023 models right now yeah I mean with respect I mean I was speaking to the the sales guy and we said we won't say say names he's a really good guy with respect to him he didn't really know or understand how he was still employed, right? He was quite open to that, yeah. and he said, I, "I, I, don't get it. You know, we've, we've, we've had. This is two years of this now. We've had nothing." He said, "We originally had no work because we couldn't come in, and then they eased that up. But then customers wouldn't come in, and then, oh, we've sold all the cars online. Now there's nothing left to sell, and we're not getting deliveries. And they, they'd had the delivery scheduled in for May. They were then, I think he said, like the day before I went in there." They'd had an interdepartmental meeting and uh, stopped taking orders. These cars are not coming. Refund orders. They're not coming in. And the next order is October, but that's indefinitely on hold. So what do you do? This is this is hard because you're, you're seeing the promotions for these vehicles yeah. globally and... If we're not getting them, and, and that, you know, this highlights that we are really a small market. But if we're not getting them, that means some of these vehicles aren't being distributed globally as well or reduced numbers. No one's getting them. No. So you, you run into two problems. First of all, you're trying to sell stuff. You're going to either get stuff that, that is dated, and no one wants a dated vehicle. I mean, why don't you? But people don't. And, and then on the, the second side is if you can suddenly start to get them, People have had to let go sales staff. They've had to let go service staff. They, you, you don't have the infrastructure any longer to carry on selling vehicles like you used to. Yeah, one of the bigger problems that I see being from that side of the of the business is that how do you keep feeding your service department? Yeah. Well, you, you had some more anecdotal conversations about even the leasing vehicles. Well, there isn't any. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so, so, in, so how, in, does, how is Hertz and other guys making making rentals happen? Or this is why the rentals are expensive, right? Right. This is why it's so expensive to rent a car, yeah. and th- 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 there's no. I mean, it's no joke. 
like there aren't any vehicles and, and the vehicles that are on lease have got to come off soon because they get into their age limit yeah. or the mileage limit. And, so what and, happens to someone who's leased a GTI exactly, yeah. and now they got to hand it in and they're going, yeah. okay, I'm ready to get the next one. And they're going, one yeah, sorry. Yeah. I know. Maybe this, just this keep is this a, one. This is a massive issue that, that's written now. 